All right. Welcome, Savvy. We're at it again. I am so blessed and honored to have you here with me. Your uh, reputation is growing. I have many people sharing our past videos. Um, we are on number seven now. We've done... Yes, number seven. So let me just, uh, for those that have not been watching, we have other shows. We have the Detox 101. That's a great place to start where we started with the colon. Now uh, we are on kidney, but we had previously done the liver. Yeah. So this is going to be a really interesting show, moving through the organs of the body to signify, you know, the significance of uh, healing from the inside out. But let me introduce myself. My name is Tara Groen. I've been a longtime yoga teacher, and I am so intrigued and always have been by the human body. I've known for a long time that when we heal from the inside out, that is true immunities, right? Yeah. Not from anything outside of us coming yeah. in to, to boost our immunity. That's not the way it works. And I knew this a long, long time ago. I have two children uh, at that when I was 21, 21, 20 and 21. Wow. And back then I had them at home. Okay. So this was in 1990. I had children wow. at home. That's ahead of time. And, right. And I knew that I wasn't going to vaccinate. So both wow. of my children are unvaccinated. And uh, 20 years later, I had another child <laughs> and he same is not vaccinated. So deep in my core, this has always been my inner truth, my inner knowing that we heal from the inside out. So that is now full circle. I'm here with Savvy. And this is why we're doing these shows for you so that we can get the science behind my intuitive knowing, you know, of this higher self that tells me, you know, and everybody can tap into this truth, this knowledge, yeah. you know, that, that it comes from our highest self connecting to god whatever you want to call it we have the truth you know yeah. but science is great and this is what savvy brings to the table he does his research and he's been doing this for decades as well and so yeah savvy can you just share a little bit of your history for uh, our viewers yeah you know um same as you same as you, right? Even as a child, I was intrigued by the human organism, how we're built. You know, what you know, it was always why. Why, why would I eat this instead of that? Why is this better than that? Why do I need to drink so much water and not soda? I was always intrigued by that. And so, but as life goes, I was sort of trapped doing other work that wasn't my true passion work, but I had to do it because I was raising kids and you have a mortgage and bills to pay, etc. But I was always wanting to do the work I was meant to do, which is what we're doing now. And yeah. so in between raising kids, I was still always into my research and going to different schools in between and building that, right? And then it was sort of like planning my escape from the nine to five rat race, as I call it, and getting over here into what I love to do. And so when you and I do this, this isn't work to me. This is like joy. And yeah. so I love doing it because I've come to discover through all the years how little people really know about their own health and bodies. They just go to the doctor, the so-called doctor, typically medical doctor, and um, what he says they do. And that's it. They don't think about it any further than that. And a lot of times it's to their own demise. They get sicker, right? Yeah. Or they yeah. die early. Uh, so it's kind, of a, it's kind of a ministry now for me. 
This is like my ministry is to put it out there, as we say, the good news of what we've discovered, put it out there. And then it's up to them to say, okay, yeah, uh, that resonates or maybe it doesn't resonate. That's up to them, right? But as you put the puzzle together, you start to see that about 80% of this knowledge can apply to all of us. And then the other 20%, you can, you know, biohack that to your own personal life or whatever. But um, I just heard a stat, Ta, yesterday that was alarming to me because on the other shows we talked about for detoxification protocols, we started with the GI tract and then we went to the liver and now we're going to just talk about kidneys. But um, on one of the other shows, I mentioned that there's like 88,000 man-made chemicals out there and more coming all the time. I heard a stat yesterday uh, that they are working on a thousand new chemicals per hour, per hour. Sound, that sounds hard to believe. Even if I said per month, that would be hard to believe. But I'm talking about more. The chemicals are just, they just keep coming, right? And so right. now detoxification as a lifestyle it's not even negotiable you kind of have to do it you just have to do it you have to read your labels and you have to pick and choose what you're going to eat these days okay right right uh, because we're going to talk about kidneys all right so when we talked about the liver the liver is like a large filter it's the largest organ and we talked about you can literally surgically remove a huge portion of the liver and it grows back. But when we talk about the kidneys, the kidneys don't have that ability, but the kidneys are also a filter too. And so the liver and the kidneys are kind of like, you know, partners in this, right? And so we talk about blood volume and the kidneys the kidneys will literally can hold up to 22% of our blood volume at any given time. Wow. That's, that's an interesting fact. I mean, that's a lot of blood for the kidneys to hold on to and then filter. And so liver is filtering and is kind of a chemical factory too. But then the kidneys are over here and they're actually somewhat fragile compared to the liver. So we have to be very careful with our kidneys. Right? Yeah, where are the kidneys? For those that so don't know. A lot of people are. think they're in the low, low back, but they're actually higher than that. You know, okay. they're, they're sort of like just past the 12th ribs down there. Okay. Right? Yep. And so, um, and interestingly enough, uh, my wife, um, and I, I forget about this a lot, and it's a good reminder. My wife has one of her kidneys is small. So it's only like half the size of a normal kidney. So for my wife, it's like she only has one and a half kidneys, right? Wow, so yeah. Even more. Now, even more, let's be aware, in my wife's case, of what you're eating. Because our, our kidneys have to filter all of this. Pesticide, herbicide, fungicide, plastics, heavy metals, all this stuff is coming through the blood into the kidneys to be filtered. And the kidneys, it's such a brilliant design that they'll filter this blood, right? But then they will pull out and recycle things that we actually could use again, like minerals, as an example. So it can recycle as well as filter. And then it takes this filter, this filtered blood, and it's kind of loaded with ammonia. Right. Depend, depending on your diet. Like if, if you're a heavy, heavy meat eater, then the ammonia rises because the meat is heavy nitrogen, whereas fruit is like heavy carbon. Right. And so this heavy nitrogen uh, produces even more ammonia. And then the and then the kidneys have to turn it into urea slash urine. Right. And right. so when we think about eating food through the GI tract, 
the liver has to process everything coming through there, sends it around through the blood, and then the kidneys have to take over after that. But when we think about eating and food is metabolized, comes out through the GI tra tract, out through the rectum, that's um, digestive waste. But then when the cells of our body running like little engines, producing ATP for energy, there's a waste produced there too, like exhaust from the car. Well, Oxi oxidation. So that's the oxidation that you're talking about? Yeah, so it's metabolic waste, waste. oxidation, metabolic waste. Well, okay. that waste is very low on the pH scale. It's very low on the pH scale. And so on the pH scale, seven is, you know, neutral, right? Okay. And then above seven is more alkaline and below seven is more acid, corrosive, hot, burning. Well, that metabolic waste is like a three. It's very hot. Okay. That dumps over into the lymphatic system and into the lymph nodes. And the nodes then metabolize that to about a six pH. So much cooler, much cooler. It's neutralized some okay. of the acidity. And then it, though, it comes out through the kidneys. All right. Okay. So I see where you're going. So do the steps again. So step one, uh, you're, you're walking us through the steps, right? Of, of, di of me Meta metabolism. Metabolized. Yeah. Metabolism. So the, this yeah. is metabolism 101. <laughs> is this this yeah. is what you're doing. So, uh, all right. So let's see if I got it. So it's the colon. And then that colon in the digestion tract, the everything. So from top to bottom, you come out with this uh, exhaust, right? This well, is when you, you when you when you eat food, digestive waste, that's the GI tract through the liver, and all it goes out and out. But the cells of the body, yes, burning energy. They have their own waste. Right. And that's what, what you're calling exhaust. And that oxidation or exhaust goes into the lymphatic system. Yes. And then yes. that lymphatic system has to then go through the organs. Well, the lymphatic system now takes it through the lymph nodes. Okay. Which would be septic tanks is a good way to put it. They're septic tanks. Oh, tank. wow. So they have to meta metabolize waste like a yes. sewer, like a sewer or a septic tank so the yeah. nodes because we have you know god knows how many nodes we yeah have. well sometimes my nodes in the in the neck get swollen um yeah. i've had when i was a teenager sometimes i've had i'd have swollen nodes under my arms so yeah. those are yeah. two and so yeah. when they're swollen mm -hmm. they're doing their job they're ah. under, they're under stress doing their job but that metabolic waste along with environmental waste what we're breathing what we're putting on our skin what was in the food pesticide herbicide fungicide plastics metals now also make their way through the kidneys too which could be a strain on our kidneys right okay so hold on one second so the lymph nodes are the sewer and then how do where's the kidneys after that well, the whole lymphatic system is the sewer. And then the lymph nodes are the septic tanks. Right. Okay. And then so when all of that fluid goes into the blood and then the kidneys and then the liver. So I'm sort of missing a step. See, it's interesting that you said that about the blood because medical doctors, allopaths, they do think that this stuff dumps back into the blood. But if you talk to the naturopaths, they say it's impossible or it would be illogical for acidic waste to dump back into our bloodstream because the blood has to, has to stay 7.3 on the alkalinity scale. Has to. Okay. We can have heavy, uh, low pH of a three, four, five dumping back into our blood. It would strain the blood and the blood trying to maintain a pH of 7.3. And that's why- Wow. 
Wow, I just have to pause a second here because this is huge. If doctors don't understand that dif the difference of the pH with the lymph and the blood and how everything's working, then do they know anything about the human body? <laughs> well, you know, unfortunately, they're trained under the um, Pasteur model of the germ theory versus the Bocomp model of terrain theory. Uh, you know, and Pasteur, even on his deathbed, admitted that Bocomp was correct about that. And so they're trained from a different standpoint. And so you're probably right. They're not understanding the lymphatic system the way a naturopath does or a homeopath does, right? Wow. So because of that, their treatment model is quite different than a naturopath's treatment. Right. Very different. And so we're coming from the standpoint, like you mentioned earlier, that there is a great designer. You can call it God. I do. I call it God, an architect designer of the human body and everything else around us for that matter. And so understanding and understanding that those different roads and which roads you're on leads to different, different outcomes. And so right. from my standpoint, from what I've studied, um, the lymphatic system would be the sewer. And that's why we have three times more lymph than blood. So the blood yeah. is the kitchen. Yeah. But when I heard that, I uh, was just going, wow, why are we talking so much about blood uh, when there's so much more lymph? And then what's fascinating, and I keep repeating this now since I've heard this fact, is that the lymph doesn't have a pumping mechanism like the blood circulation has the heart. So in order for us to clean the sewer, the lymph, the whole system needs to move Oof. by physical movement. Us, we That's have to right. move our body in order to create this sewer uh, metabolism. And that's why we said that, it, you know, if we wanted to pick something to be the heart of the um, lymphatic system, it would be the calf muscles. The calf? The the, calf like our leg? For movement. And that's why walking, if somebody could only pick like one exercise, walking. Walking very fast. And isn't that interesting that we were designed to move? Yeah. <laughs> right? And what does a cat do when it wakes up? Or all animals, for that matter. They stretch yeah. Yeah, before all. they get going. Right? They Good stretch. stretch. <laughs> like, like you do. Woo! I stretch all the time. It's my... my uh my love. It's my passion. I never get tired of it. So two main functions, filter, recycle. Now, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you some symptoms of a kidney or kidneys that aren't functioning, fun functioning very well. Okay. Let's think about it. Puffy eyes, under the eyes, bags, mm -hmm. even above the eyes too. Mm -hmm. But especially below, big bags mm -hmm. under the eyes. Low urine output. Wow. How about blood in the urine? Whoa, that's how about, dangerous. How about edema, fluid, all in the lower half, ankles, feet, swollen. You grab them and let go and the marks stay full of, full of fluid. How about shortness of breath? How about sleep issues, fatigue? Now, let me ask you this. Puffy eyes, swollen feet and ankles, shortness of breath. We have a fluid retention problem, right? Fluid retention, even around the lungs, shortness of breath. The kidneys aren't filtering. Why? Now, if the kidneys aren't filtering and the sewer is backing up, can I get fatigue? I'm Absolutely. tired all the time. Why? Because the toxins aren't getting out. Yeah. Imagine the, the brain too, fog. 
You can get brain swelling even. Mm -hmm. Now, what if a person has eczema, psoriasis, rosacea, dandruff, um, all of these skin problems? Now what's going on? The kidneys aren't filtering again. And so the skin, the third kidney. Okay. The body has to go to the third kidney, the skin, and said, look, your kidneys aren't filtering. I'm shoving it out of the skin. What happens if your baby pees his diaper and you don't change his diaper for five days? What happens to his little butt? Gets a rash. He gets a rash yeah. because the urine is eliminating toxicity. So that's what the a lot of the skin um, is about, the kidneys. So you support the kid, kidneys for eczema and your eczema is going to go away? Is that what you're saying? Well, it's a huge tool on getting rid of eczema. Wow. Now, why would your kidneys not be filtering? Why? Too much toxins from all of the chemicals. There's a thousand more chemicals being invented every hour. Do you, you know what's the number, <laughs> what is the number one? What is the number one killer of the kidneys? Diabetes. Sure. So, okay. So diabetes. Sugar. What happens to diabetics? They have to go get what? Insulin. Dialysis. Oh, oh, to support the liver. No, the kidneys. I mean, I mean kidneys. Oh, right. Oh, so dialysis is for the kidneys. Okay. Thank That's you. That's right. And so, and so the sugar, what kind of sugar? Refined sugars. Candy, cookies, uh, donuts, the ice creams, refined sugars, not fruit, donuts. Yeah. The, the, so the high fructose yes, yes. corn syrup. Yeah, all the processed stuff that is junk. That that heavy sugar, like the corn syrups, yeah, is so hard on the kidneys, right? Yep. Yep. So Moderation. Good. I mean, I have chocolate chip cookies that I just made, but it's Christmas. See my Christmas tree. So if you're watching, you're not going to eat a thousand. You're not going to eat uh, a box of chocolate chip cookies every week. You're not doing that. It's no. it. You can you can you don't have to be a monk. It's just that the time to be a monk is when you have diabetes. Right there, you go. That is the message that is the higher self telling uh giving us those cues that we need to change it is a gift for transformation so let me ask you this another symptom of kidney problem is uh heavy duty muscle spasms muscle twitches um uh you know these types of tremors it's because the kidneys are also intimately involved in electrolyte metabolism. All right. So that brings a thought. So when the cramps uh, of the calves and the legs and restless leg syndrome, all of that, those things, you're uh, associating that with liver health. I mean, kidney health. I'm sorry. I keep scrolling. Well, it, it is because two things. One, there's not enough minerals in the food at all, first of all. And so we need to really supplement with uh, minerals, first of all. But then secondly, if you are supplementing with minerals, um, and hopefully it, they're liquid or powders that become liquid, so you can actually absorb them. Um, and so you're like, well, I, I think I'm getting adequate minerals, yet I'm still having restless leg and I'm still having cramping. Mm -hmm. Then you have to say, well, I wonder if your kidneys are functioning properly to help regulate electrolytes correctly. I wonder if that could be, because let's remember what sets on top of the kidneys to the adrenals. All right, I knew you were gonna bring that in to play. So supporting kidney and adrenal health uh, yeah, because, is absolutely important. One of the first things you're saying is uh, cut out the refined sugars. Cut them out and then up your game on your minerals. Yeah. And then up your game. Your your solutions. Did you hear that? 
uh, refined sugars immediately cut out and then making sure that you have the assimilated liquid minerals. Yeah. So one of the two particular minerals that are really helpful to the kidneys, magnesium, which is going to go a long way with cramping. Yeah. And that's why there's this product called Calm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And is Calm uh, calcium and magnesium or is it potassium? I think it's a combination. There's different versions of Calm, but the, all three of those are part of it. So the two that are it's all the minerals, first of all, disclaimer, we're not medical doctors, yeah. you know. Um, we're Take not full doctors. responsibility for your own health. Yeah, this I mean, not here to we are not here to diagnose, treat or cure. Right. So we're just here to impart uh, knowledge. Yes. So all the minerals, we need them all. The trace minerals too. Uh, you know, copper, selenium, zinc, they're all we need them all. A minimum of 60 up to 78 every day. We need them all. But the ones that seem to be particularly helpful for kidneys are magnesium and potassium yeah. and very interestingly enough um, even when you look at uh, supplements uh, many times uh, the potassium levels are are low and I've learned over this last year that truthfully per day every day you're supposed to have like 4,000 milligrams of potassium well in our world, we're inundated with salt already, and it's fake salt. So anything in cans and boxes is this, you know, unpurified, you know, chemically altered fake salt. And so we're overloaded with that already. But the potassium can buffer that. And so if you were to get the proper amount of potassium, it goes a long way in helping the kidneys and balancing out the heavy sodium uh, diet. Right, right. And so I'm thinking that if you are doing your, you know, traditional package stuff, I mean, which I don't advocate at all, it's even more important to balance that out with potassium is what you're saying. Yeah, if you're going to do all this true uh fake salt out there which everybody's palate is so used to yeah. you know they're so used to salt that uh it is essential that you do balance that out with potassium for the kidneys yeah and so all the minerals but yeah if, as long as you're on the heavy uh american diet if especially with the fast foods are loaded with the fake salt in fact, uh, I remember one time as I was start, starting to get cleaner, my body was getting cleaner. Um, you'll discover that the cleaner that you get, uh, if you fall off the wagon and eat um, a, a standard American diet food, you'll have even more of a blowback than somebody else will. Yeah, you will get that toxic hangover in the morning, which, which which is what we were talking about right at the beginning. The puffy eyes, the fatigue, the brain fog, the swollen ankles. You wake up and go, whoa, my ring's not <laughs> fitting anymore. It's just, this blowback is intense. It's intense. I, I went to, uh, we went to P.F. Chang's, Chinese. And uh, I was a trainer in the gym back then. We went out to P.F. Chang's for whatever reason, date, day, I, I remember it, something. And we ate P.F. Chang's. And the next morning, uh, my eyes were swole, swollen shut. Wow. I had to use like a fighter in a, in a boxing ring. I had to use an ice pack and rub <laughs> swelling out. And then I discovered on a chart of the sodium levels in fast foods, which they don't consider P.F. Chang's fast food, but it's- Right, right. It's a nice, you know, fairly mid-range, nice restaurant. Yeah, but it's a chain. Yeah. It's a chain. But the sodium level, when I saw it, the sodium level in P.F. Chang's was so high, I couldn't believe it. I said, I'm, I will never- 
eat there again. Yeah. yeah. After, after seeing that, because I experienced the blowback. You see right. what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Personally. So. I love it. I love one it. One more thing about kidneys. How, have you ever known anybody that had a kidney stone? Do you know how brutal, brutally painful? So painful. I have known. And uh, it was, uh, the story was incredibly dramatic. Just on the ground, can't move, barely able to get to the phone. All of that incredibly uh, deab de debilitating. Debil how, how do you say that word? De debilitating. Right. Absolutely could not move on the ground. Okay. So there's a particular doctor. I, I, I study with like 30 of them, but there's one in particular that has really, it's really been eye-opening uh, in studying with this guy. He was straight up vegan. Uh, well, except for um, for legs, he would do it. So, so let's say he was vegetarian, straight vegetarian for, I don't know, 15, 18 years. And then he literally was have with his bowel movements, he had blood. He had bloody stools. And it turned out, and I learned this, I, I learned this from Dr. Mercola as well. Dr. Mercola, and I forget this lady's name, they did a two-hour podcast on this. But this doctor had eaten so many plants that were high in what they call oxalates that it ruined his bowels. And you could get kidney stones from a plant-based diet with plants that are high in oxalates, though, like spinach. Wow. And kale and all of the cabbages and all of that stuff. Spinach right. And kale are the first two that always come to mind. Yep. Right. But I mean to tell you that these oxalates, not only will they ruin your gut, but they can cause things yeah. like, like gout like symptoms, like gout. And not only in the toes and feet, but like in all your joints and um, kidney stones, which could be brutal. And so I'm like, whoa. So look, there's plenty of plant-based foods. You don't have to eat the high oxalate ones. Maybe you've been getting away with it. But I can tell you that one of the ways to help your kidneys out is to use your apple cider vinegar and your lemon water. And so- Right, right. Water, Thank you for those solutions. I was going, that was going to be my next question. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, I, things are coming to my mind. You know, the kale thing was such a big deal a couple of years ago, but I no. know people have stopped um, doing a lot of that raw kale salads and all of that. Um, and it makes sense. I, I would- um, have a hard time with digesting that kale. Person. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's a couple of doctors I work with keeping in mind, they're straight um, plant-based doctors. They don't vert. They don't even eat eggs, nothing, you know, um, uh, they will tell you in their opinions that kale is food for like goats. It's not okay. even <laughs> right. Right. Even for humans. Right. right. And then of course you have others that love kale, but I'm just yeah. saying. And then of drowning it. I love this. So then my next thought was uh, drowning it in the lemon, just like a whole freaking lemon on the, on the kale, right. To cook yeah. it, to get it all going. And so then you're telling me uh, the apple cider vinegar and the lemon. I'm like, okay, all right. I was balancing out my kale with the, yeah. With yeah. the others. Yeah. And so, you know, so a way to um, a three, three ways to de-stone yourself and to um, break down crystallized deposits throughout your whole body, not just the kidneys, is the lemon water and the apple cider vinegar and distilled water. And yes. So, so yes. Can you share why it's distilled? I mean, because it's so fascinating. You're, we're talking about minerals and people are sharing that, well, don't drink distilled because you need the minerals. And so there's a little conflict there. Can you clarify that? Well, I mean, look, uh, rainwater 
from God is distilled. So the water coming from the sky that drops down is distilled water, okay. right? Yeah. Now, if rainwater is landing on the earth and the plant is able to take distilled water to grow, but it can take distilled water and the plant has the ability to take rocks, inorganic minerals and absorb them, chelate them with the sun's energy and chelate them into a form you and I can absorb by eating the plant. So right, the structured plant water. I love describing that as structured water from the plants, fruits, and vegetables, right? Yeah. So, and so distilled water, look, you can drink uh, reverse osmosis water. I mean, when we get into the subject of water, there's different waters, right? And so, um, for example, when Dr. Group did like something crazy, like, uh, I don't know how many days it was, water fast. He was drinking different waters, distilled water for a week, reverse osmosis water for a week, uh, alkaline water for a week, like that. Well, distilled water is perfect water to strip the inorganic minerals and the crystal deposits out of the body. It's right. So if yeah. water. Absolutely. So back full circle back to the kidney stones. And that is why when you're working on the kidneys, you're going to want to use distilled water to clear those stones out. With lemon and apple cider vinegar. Yeah. So what we actually did, can I take a glass of distilled water? and add liquid minerals to it. Of course, I can add the minerals into the distilled water. Yes. Right, because they're all, no, it strips everything. Right, oh my gosh. And this is so much a part of my control too. I want pure water and then I want to be able to control the minerals. Oh my gosh, my dog wants to say hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so yeah, it's that control. You know, you get the pure, clean water and then you add how much you want to take in as minerals. Now, it's I want to mention cool. this uh, because I think we talked about this once before. I can't remember, but I want to mention that with the kidneys in particular, let's mention for a minute bodybuilders. So bodybuilders that are trying to get huge, right? Huge in the gym. They live in the gym. They do two things. They eat all day and then they train. These guys will eat 10,000 calories in a day. And a lot of it is horrible food combining. Chicken with rice, chicken with rice, chicken with rice. Right. right? Beef yeah, we rice. talked about that. If you haven't... Uh... If you're not understanding the food combining, go back to one of our shows on the colon, the first right. Detox 101. Yes. My point is this, though. Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman was the king, Mr. Universe. I don't know how many times. Let's just say nine. I, he was like the king, Ronnie Coleman. If you saw Ronnie Coleman right now, he's had so many surgeries. The guy can barely walk. He's not that old. He can barely yeah. walk. And do you know how many bodybuilders have blown out their kidneys? Because the heavy meat diet, heavy meat diet, 10,000 calories a day, a lot of meat, lots of protein, complex protein. It's so heavy in nitrogen that to metabolize it all is such a strain on the kidneys yeah now if that meat is not organic grass-fed meat for for beef and then organic chickens clean fish if you don't have all of that too then it blows out the adrenal glands as well and the right. put on top of the kidneys and keeping in mind that when the body's being built in the womb from stem cells by the way Right, right. When are we going to talk about how patches? We talk about stem cells. We're going to talk about our patches 
how our patches can help with the kidneys. Well, the adrenal glands originally, when the body's being built, are on the bottom. And the kidneys sort of develop through the adrenals. Wow. And then the adrenals wind up on the top. Wow. But they start on the bottom. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, that is interesting. That's you and I are both the same with our the way we uh, what interests us. Yes, that is yeah, interesting. Just, I, the adrenals, all... and then the kidneys sort of grow, and then the adrenals end up on top. Yeah, so they're like... the. It seems like that they they would be um, superior in a way. There they are the uh, stress balancers. They are what creates the. Uh, well, they, adaptation, right. adaptation for our um, metabolism, right? Well, you're right. They kind of tell the kidneys kind of what to do. Yes. And I, <laughs> it's not because I study. It's just because my intuition guides me. <laughs> so think about it. What we're saying here is this. With your diet. Are there any vegan bodybuilders? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A whole bunch of them. They're ripped. They're ripped. So does the body want protein or does it want amino acids? Right. We talk about that. Talk about the that. raw materials, however so, we get them. So if our kidneys are beat up and we're going to now do things like apple cider vinegar, lemon water, distilled water, um, we're going to maybe not eat so much complex proteins. Maybe we're going to eat the watery foods we talk about. Maybe we add celery juice or celery because the salt found in celery is God's salt. Yeah. And the it's structure, the structure of the true plant is what will heal us. The celery found in salt is also found in structured water because the celery has structured water with the salts. Yeah. Cluster salts, they call them, and they flush the kidneys. So if the kidneys are backed up and we have a heavy, heavy meat diet, we don't have enough uh, hydrating structured water in our blood and our blood's a little thick, right? Maybe it's getting a little yogurty. It's getting too thick you will now get high blood pressure because the body has to push the blood through the little tiny, tiny capillaries in the kidneys that, that are smaller than a hair on your head. And the body has to push the blood through the kidneys to get the blood filtered and the blood pressure goes up. Yep. I love, I love the way you uh, describe the human body. And I'm understanding this vehicle so much more and how it's intricate, intricately balanced through all of these systems. And we've been moving through the systems. But in essence, we all know this is a uh, homeostasis of balance that is because of the whole thing. Right. We only have the two fluids, really. Right. We have the blood and the lymph three times more lymph than blood. We have the circulatory system, which has the so-called heart, unless you talk to Dr. Cowan and Gerald Pollack, which say, they say it's a valve, not a pump, but whatever. Mm -hmm. And then we have the lymphatic system, which has no pump. No pump, just our movement. That's why I do what I do to help people stay healthy through movement and breath. Let me ask you this. If they said, oh, your kidneys are failing, you have kidney failure. We talked about things that we can take in for the kidneys. But if we went to patches now, what am I going to use here? Can I use glutathione patch? I would be, that would be the first one I would suggest. I was wondering which one you would suggest first. But we also know that the kidneys are a filter. So what do we want to do to help take the pressure off the kidneys so they don't have to filter so many toxins? If we're going to have glutathione, then we probably would want to use binders. Right. And we talk about binders extensively in that Detox 101. For the, uh, 
probably for the go back to the watch that one that one's really important but binders uh you will understand what binders are when you watch that yeah but also by the way the trace mineral zinc very very special for the uh, for the kidneys now what about eon patch we could take the pressure off the adrenal uh, yes, yes absolutely um the reducing of inflammation in the body and, the and relaxing the patch. nerves yeah calm the adrenal the maybe is that how it works oh it's so interesting i'm just fascinated well the adrenals neurotransmitters right and so we have hormones and neurotransmitters adrenal glands so the eon patch relaxes the nerves yeah, yeah. take the pressure off the adrenals yes and then of course we need stem cell production to repair the damaged kidneys yep because the stem the cells patches. Are yeah so i'm i'm doing four patches um so doing three patches is a good thing absolutely I do four now absolutely like glutathione like I've really gotten after SP6 now. Yep, me By too. How do you know? How do you, how did you know? That's the new one I'm trying because yeah. I hadn't tried it. So SP6 will also help adrenals and kidneys a little bit. Oh wow! Now tell me, tell me why? Why is that the case? Because you told me it's for the hypothalamus and it's to well, regulate. We have, you know the endocrine system. So they're a team. You know, a team. It's kind of like uh, I can do B12 spray, which I do from Garden of Life Enzymes. So I'll do B12 spray, so but good. B12 spray is only one of the Bs. What about B5, B6, B3? So the Bs are like, you know, they're a team. They work better that way as a team. The minerals we talked about, well, potassium, uh, magnesium, really helpful for the kidneys. Okay. Maybe I could do a little extra potassium and magnesium at first, but really my minerals are a team as well. The body is a team, a system of systems. So I have the endocrine system. So I have hypothalamus, thymus, you know, thyroid, parathyroid, pituitary, pineal, adrenals, a team. And then the adrenals sit on top of the kidneys, right? And so uh, SP6, and I would really like to do a deep dive on SP6. Maybe we'll do a little show on that, on SP6, because it's interesting how David is able to use light therapy to affect, say, the pituitary gland. How? Right, right. It's fascinating to me that these frequencies, these light frequencies are specific to each uh, of the patches. So the, the so I'm still unclear uh, how we started with the hypothalamus and then you move throughout the entire body with the PS6. SP6, yeah. SP6. Yeah, well, it's interesting because... Um, with SP6, when I, the, the little bit of deeper dive I did on it, it did not hit the entire endocrine system. It was selective. It was kind of like hypothalamus, but not pituitary, right? Or say maybe it was thyroid, but I would have to think if you affect the thyroid, you have to affect the parathyroids. It's just fascinating. I don't know, experientially, like how does this patch work? I'm feeling it as, um, just this well let's just it, say that cravings it's seriously about cravings i am not uh as um craving greedy. sugar I, i'm not as greedy with like my palate for some reason and it's very natural and uh it's almost like i'm uh, tuning in to my uh correct chemistry and well, bypassing the uh, mind yeah. who, who thinks i want this you know, my mind's not worried about that anymore. It's now my body uh, listening to what my body needs. Is that's an excellent description? I'm very, very sensitive. I can feel these things. I can feel the distinct difference. This is about 
chemistry, body chemistry is now craving what it needs exactly. Not the mind thinking right. I need another cookie or whatever. It's That's really right. a subtle difference. It's amazing. It's amazing. You're so right. I mean, what you're doing is, is you're turning off the matrix. So you're turning off the matrix. Now it's like me. Like I don't I, like I, I I got the uh, Dish Network bill the other day. It was like one hundred and eighteen dollars. I told my wife, "Why am I paying one hundred and eighteen dollars for a television I don't even watch? I don't watch television." No, so I'm really? turning off the matrix. Let me let me kind of absorb that a little bit. You're, so you're, you're saying you're word, that I am right. now in tune with exactly what I need, and I'm not letting the outside matrix dictate what I need. And, brain, yeah, and, and brainwash you. Yeah, brain. Yeah. Ah, oh, I see. So yeah, good. Yeah, You're so good. good. This is why I had this is why I keep having you over and over again. I'm like, I'm so intrigued and so interested in the way we like work together. It's like wow. So yeah, absolutely the matrix. Off. I'm turning the freaking matrix off. You're but what's off helping me is my freaking SP6 is on my back. And it's turning the matrix off. That's what you just said. <laughs> you're, you're basically coming out from under the spell, right? It's like you were hypnotized yeah. and you're like, wake up, Todd, wake yeah. up. You don't, yeah. you don't need to eat fat. Your body wants this. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. wow. okay. My body, my yeah. body. And it's, it's like this. It's it, for example, you could say uh, it's two 30 today. And I actually feel a little sleepy today. I'm going to go ahead and and honor that, and I'm going to do a 15 minute little yeah. snooze. Yeah. You know why? Because if you the cleaner you get, your body's like, okay, you're eating so clean now that I spend so little time digesting garbage that now I'm going to put a little more energy into repairing tissue. I would like you to take a little nap, please. Yeah. Yeah. And to honor that and to listen and to decondition from the matrix and honor what yeah. your body chemistry really wants you to do. Tom, in the 1950s, this is how crazy the matrix is. Matrix is. In the 1950s, they had TV commercials with doctors, so-called doctors, not nature baths, allopaths talking to their patients about which cigarette they recommend. <laughs> Doctor, which cigarette do you, I recommend Lucky Strikes. They were pushing cigarettes. Now, if you were a robot and you only listened to what my doctor said, Lucky Strikes cigarettes are the best. Can you imagine that you end up smoking for 20 years based on a recommendation from a doctor? Really? Yeah. What are they recommending these days? Yeah, I know. Your baby, brand new, one hour old, hepatitis B shot. Yeah. And rub this goop in their eyes, I antibiotic smear. You're talking to the choir here because I did that when I was 20. I knew that that was not the route I was going. Babies at home in Baby. 1990. So you, were, you were ahead of the curve on that one. Let me just tell you. So anyway, any other points on the kidneys here? Uh, well, just to be clear, you recommended those. We had three, but then you did the fourth one. So share, share with us the patch protocol you would do to help support uh, the kidneys. Oh, um, yeah, so obviously glutathione, which is the king antioxidant to detox with binders, though. Uh, otherwise, we flood the kidneys with even more crap. So no binders. Uh, supercharged C60 charcoal, uh, C60 charcoal, um, uh, modified citrus pectin, whatever binders you want to use. Um, even the clays, but I like the charcoals better. Zeolites, quite good. Right. And definitely get some um protocols on that and we will uh, we will be ha 
be offering different protocols on how to do this because people are asking how do we exactly do it what are the specifics so that's coming in the future and we will definitely have that uh available soon we're working on that uh, eon patch only because the adrenals sit on top of the kidneys and we want to relax the body the nervous system relax it the inflammation patch the EM patch, glutathione uh, and the eon and then of course uh if you're going to rebuild tissue you have to have stem cells for that and stem the activation of the copper peptide and uh again we're on our seventh show we've done a whole episode on copper peptide and the x39 so that's yeah. our most uh revered i would say uh youth regenerative patch is building our stem cells yes yeah because you can't rebuild tissue without it yeah so, absolutely yeah, again that's sending the contractors yeah. in to do the the work right so, and then now uh, and then the last patch that we were just talking about which i'm experimenting with and i am just blown away at my ability to sense the difference sense the difference uh with the ps sp6 sp6 you know that's interesting that you feel the sp6 like that um i i think that i do as well the one that i that I'm sensitive with is the Eon patch for relaxing the nervous system and head to toe inflammation. That's the one that I can't live without is the Eon patch. That said, I'm completely out right now. Yeah, but me too. <laughs> I'm so I'm nice. away, yeah. and I'm like, I, I, you almost feel a little naked now without the right. patch. So but I'm it, like, no, I don't want to run out of that. Way. I shared some with somebody and that's why I, I ran out. Right. But uh, it's interesting. I am out, but it also gives me a pure chance to uh, understand the new patch that I'm trying with the yeah. SP6. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah um, that's kind of, you know, we did uh, GI tract, we did liver, we did kidneys. You know, that's kind of a brief little overview of yeah. detoxification protocol. Yeah. And, and um, Okay, so we do want to stress and um, the importance of this knowledge. It's absolutely uh, here to be shared. It is transforming lives. We have 2,000 testimonials on how it's helping people heal from chronic um, de de debilitating uh, diseases. So that is why I'm here, Savvy. I've been doing these patches for three and a half years. And it's just in the last couple of months that I have decided that I am an advocate. Uh, I want to uh, become partners with more people so that we can yep. offer this uh, technology to the world. Well, so, we need partners. Yeah. We need more partners. Um, anybody that anybody that's interested in this stuff like we are, um, reach out and partner uh, because we can't do it all. There's 7.8 billion people. And the beauty of the patch is, is that it's a no brainer. Anybody can do it. It's not like, oh God, I hate apple cider vinegar. I can't drink that. Yeah. No, no, you need to. Oh, I can't, I can't. Anybody can do uh, the patch. It's like, you know, like putting on a band-aid that's it that's it and even if you are adverse to the adhesive on the on the bandage i've had a couple people that way you put it on your clothes put it on your clothes Wear it on your clothes that's right and so the beauty of of getting cleaner and cleaner with removing toxicity and upping your nutrients and i just heard david talk about it the other day uh, David told the story <clears throat> of there was a guy that used to be here with us that came to him at a convention and said, I don't think you should talk about these other products so much. You're going to lower the sales <clears throat> of our patches. And David said, well, then you don't really understand what we're doing here, do you? Because we're not here to sell things. That's not what we're doing. Okay, you have to buy the patches. We three dollars and 30 cents a day we mm -hmm. that's not what we're doing here 
it is a crime to have knowledge of healing tissue in the body and not share it. Absolutely. That's, a, that's criminal. And wow. so we're not sharing, or excuse me, we're not selling things. We're sharing information because the patches are not enough. The patches are a huge major tool, easy to do. Light frequency is the future now, but they're not enough. It's always yeah. going to they're not enough because we have a vehicle that takes in uh, food and nourishment. And how are we nourishing our body through our systems? And that's the incredible. Thank you for that. That's the incredible uh, motivation, your mission, our mission to share the uh, the healing from within with right. the tools. That's that right. And so it's all it's a it's a it's a again a system of things, right? So the body is a system of systems and to heal is a system of things and it can be enjoyable. So the cleaner you get, the more you get more consciously aware. And that's that means unplugging from the matrix. Yeah, I love how we did that with our with the show. That's great, the matrix. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull that clip out and put it up. All right, Savvy, we are exactly at an hour. This All right, we're done. What we do what we do is an hour show and we've done it again. So I so appreciate your time. Oh my God, you're so generous with your time. Thank you for doing this with me and having it on Healing Touch Vinyasa YouTube channel. And we do post it on Rumble and other platforms like Facebook. I mentioned it on my Instagram channel. So through all these avenues, we bring it all back. But yep. the main place right now is Healing Touch Vinyasa YouTube channel. So thanks for watching. And please subscribe so we can build up some of that uh, subscription. And then uh, soon I'll be able to, we'll be able to monetize the channel. <laughs> but you need yep. a certain amount of subscribers in order to do that. So yeah. please, yeah. and then uh, reach out to partner. Yeah, I love that we share all of that, and uh, all the links to that are in the um, description of this video. So, alrighty, and such. All right, Savvy, thank you. Have a great day. Okay, bye bye.